ask from survival of FGM, okay? When I got to know about FGM, I knew how long it took me for before I could able to I was able to process it. And if the what what made it add up for me was because I had already started my advocacy program. In, about FGM before I got to know that I was a survivor, so I'm fine. I was I was already fighting for a cause. I didn't know I was a victim. Do you get? But we are not victims. We are survivors. <laughs>
um, man could not use his penis to open, they will call maybe the midwife in the family or an elderly woman or some, some, someone like that. That person will use maybe a razor blade or a knife to cut her open and the husband must meet with her immediately, must have sex with her immediately. Can you, can you just imagine, why do you have to make girls go through such pain? Why do you have to inflict such pain to innocent human beings? And during child um, delivery, they will still cut her open very well. That's the infibulation, you know. Infibulation is the process. Now, the infibulation, we are removing what has been done. Now, there's also another thing called reinfibulation. That is, you are doing the infibulation again. So, after childbirth, after she has given birth, they will not reinfibulate her again. What? What do you want to achieve? Like, Shasha, why are you running and removing and running and removing? Uh -uh. So that's the type three. Now the type four is other things, like any other thing that is done to the vulva, to the female external genitalia for non-medical reasons, so, so, such as pricking, you know, stitching, anything that is done that is for um, non-medical reason. That's the type four, like the uncategorized type. Now, I've already talked about the um, types of female genital position. Now let's go into why do people do this thing yeah fine we met it like it has been for a very very long time and for some of us that are survivors of fgm we it was not what we intended we never we didn't plan for it obviously all of those survivors out there they didn't plan for it not like they requested for it it was just done so that means it is something that has been for a very very long time so now what what is the reason why is it that people are going are practicing this now the first um reason that i have here is psychosexual reason now the, the what i mean by psychosexual reason is that they have this mindset that to preserve virginity and for um, fidelity in marriage something like that now what they mean is that they believe girls that are mutilated that they cut that they, they undergo fgm they have more chances not to do you run or like they will not be wayward <laughs> that they will not be wayward and that they will not be wayward and that when they get married eventually they will be faithful to their husband so that is why they will make a very young girl go through pain with no medical reason oh no no like, no like why there was there was this thing is actually true it's real because sometimes when i'm talking to people about fgm people will be like i don't know what fgm is all about I'll be like are you serious some people will be like wait do people still practice this and i tell them body that yes we see people that practice it and they are not even shy to talk about it and you know it is part of some people's tradition and tradition is a way of life culture is a way of life so it is something that it is very difficult to eradicate but we can still eradicate it that's why that is the reason for this video where if we come together we can put an end to mgm now there was a time um i'm a member of future shakers initiative shout out to all fsis out there <laughs> so you can check us out on social media we are doing really well we are doing really really well on um different things especially on this fgm there was a time the um some of my um, organization member we they went i didn't follow them they went to to do like a survey in a town in osho state i won't mention the name of the town so when they got there they were interviewing some people and all and all and someone said that he cannot marry somebody that is not mutilated i was like are you serious they were like yes he said that he cannot marry that such person is going to be wayward and he, 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 he cannot satisfy that person sexually i was like are you serious don't, don't you know what you're talking about don't you know that what you're cutting away is even something that is going to make her not feel satis satisfied when you're doing this thing with that so she said that so my group member that, that was talking with him said don't you know that there's actually a law against this thing it was like hey, how much is it she be just fifty thousand naira that he will pay and then he will bail himself you know that means the law is too cheap i'm still going to talk get to that so the law is too cheap so they feel like hey, how much is it moreover how many of these people are actually apprehended and they are made to face the the law how many of them 
So, the number one reason is the psychosexual reason, the fact that, okay, to preserve virginity and all. Then another reason is socioeconomic factor. So, for people that you have subjected your daughters to FGM, it increases their um, eligibility for being married. That's another reason. And some people too. Then another reason in that line is that the number of dowries, the number of cows, the number of rams that will be given as dowry will increase. So you have turned your girl child to a business something. Let's leave that one. Let's talk about that. Now, another reason is hygiene and aesthetic reasons. The clitoris is seen as something that is dirty and smelly. And it is not true. It is not true. It is not dirty. It is not smelly. So, but, you know, culture, tradition, mindset, myth. This thing are myth. They are, they are what we've registered in our head and it is actually not true. Okay, so there's this myth about it that the clitoris is dirty, it is smelly and all. So they believe that they have to cut it to make the lady, to, to, to make her clean and neat, which is wrong. Then another thing is that they believe that during childbirth, for someone that is not mutilated, if the baby's head touches the clitoris, the clitoris is going to be long, like a penis, it is wrong. That is a myth and it is not true. Then another thing is that they believe that for women that they didn't cut their clitoris. They would have more sexual urge. And the fact the, the clitoris in female is, sim is similar to the penis in male. So they are trying to make them to have low libido for sex. You get. And they feel like, okay, if they didn't cut this thing, the, the, the female, that particular lady, is going to be promiscuous. And it is not true. Ladies that, are, they, they, that have... um. FGM that that ladies that have undergone FGM can be promiscuous. Ladies that do not go through FGM can be promiscuous. Going through FGM is not a factor for not being promiscuous. It's just one person. It's, it's one's mindset. It's what you've decided for yourself. Then another reason is the social pressure. Like, like for example, social pressure to conform to what others do. Even, even though you don't know why they are doing it. Like, just like, okay, oh, in our family, we used to do this thing. So you too, you have to do it. Even though you don't know the reason behind it. And it does not have any benefits. It's just like people that you give them traditional mark. Now, in our family, we used to call her. We used to put traditional mark. Maybe tutu, tutu. So because you give it a newborn baby, you have to put tutu, tutu. Why? What's the benefit? Nothing. Because that's how we used to do in our family. You too, you have to do it. It is wrong. You are violating these people's rights. You are violating, you are, you are even exposing them to more harm. There's no good in this thing. It's, it's similar. Because, okay, in our family, we used to mutilate girls. I give birth to a daughter, and we have to mutilate it. Why? What's the benefit of doing that? There's no benefit. You just want me to subject my daughter to unnecessary pain. It is not right. It is not fair. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to educate us. That's I'm really taking my time. This video is going to be a long one. I'm very sorry. But I'll try that. It will not be more than 20 to 22 minutes. Now, another thing... Another reason, I think that's the last thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, two more reasons. Another reason is the um, cultural tradition. You know, this thing has been, it's a culture. Okay, I think I already talked about it. It's a culture in our family. So you have to do it. And that is what makes it really difficult to eradicate because it's a culture. It's a way of life of people. So, you know, you are trying to, to change their way of life. You are trying to restructure their thinking and see that what they are doing and they've been doing for years is wrong. Now, the final reason why people do it, and this thing is not even justifiable, Koko, is religious reason, which is really wrong. The Bible, nor the Quran, did not support FGM, okay? But people just use religious reasons so as to justify their actions. Christianity and Islam did not support or do not support FGM. Now, what are the um, implications of FGM, consequences of FGM? We have the immediate consequence and we have the long-term consequence complication. Now, the immediate complication is pain. Pain, unnecessary pain. I, I, there's a documentary I watched and, oh God, I'll still talk about it later. So, pain, that's number one. Then number two, infection. Infection like tetanus, HIV, 
hepatitis. And do, do you know the funniest thing is that this People that perform this thing, they don't have any knowledge on sterilization of instruments. They will use the same instrument for the same people, for different people. Do you get? And this thing, especially in, in, in towns that they do it as a tradition, they do it like they do it like a ceremony. They'll bring about maybe 15 or 20, 20 girls that have reached a particular age. So they will start doing it. They will hold them down. Oh my, the one lower, the one lesser, hold them on their two hands and feet. And, 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 and they will start cutting them, cutting them, cutting them. Like you don't wear them. Do you get? And it is your, your, you're exposing them to pain, to infection. Then another thing is the hemorrhage, excessive bleeding. Then another thing is shock. You, shock. Then another thing is urinary problem, fever. Those, those are the immediate complications of FGM. Now, the long term complication of FGM, we have urinary problem too. We have vagina infection we have menstrual problem painful menstruation we have painful intercourse keloid and scar tissue formation increased risk of childbirth then another thing is psychological problem this depression people that that, that that's why they should i think now people are trying to focus more on survivors of fgm they have increased risk of on the, of get of having depression anxiety then post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. So those are the implications. Those are the, compl those are the complications of FGM. Okay? Now, I already said that FGM has no health benefits. I don't need to, I can I don't need to really emphasize that too much. There's no health benefit to FGM. So finally, I want to talk about is it finally now? How to solve this FGM issue? A lot of people are already saying, okay, FGM, FGM, this FGM, that, FGM, this FGM, that. So how do we solve this thing? There are basically like maybe three ways to solve this. Number one is education. Number two is advocacy and law. The number three is empowerment. Education in the sense that we have to keep educating people. I talk about FGM say maybe once in a week or some sometimes. And sometimes I get I see people that be like, eh. So they do this thing to girls. And I'll be like, don't you know? Even if your sister has something like this has been done to your sister, don't you know? Do you get so? Things like this are, are happening. So that's why we have to keep educating people about what FGM is all about, the myth that is there, and the fact that it does not have any benefits, but um, then another way we can also fight to put an end to FGM is by advocating, advocacy and law. See, our law, Nigeria is actually one of those countries that have put a ban, that have law against FGM but it is not being it is not implemented because me personally i've never seen anyone that is being um that faced the the law as a result of practicing mgm i've never seen so that's why we need to increase more on the advocacy and the law and that's what i said fsi was trying to we are trying to do as we were talking with we are still on it talking with the um, out, out of assembly in Osho State to try to review. The law has been since 2004, I think. Imagine 2004. It's too cheap. We need to bring it with more serious penalty. The people we know that we mean business about this thing. And we should also voice out people that have done this thing that have, you know, now that are doing it. So we, we should let them know. So if they still go against the law, then we can apprehend them. Then, um, I already talked about this case and law. Then finally, I want to talk about empowerment. You know, people that do, that practice this FGM of a thing, they, they practice it as a means of livelihood. They get some money from it, and that's what they use to support them, their, themselves and all that. Now, we need to empower them so that they would have another source of living. They won't, they won't depend on the money that people will bring to circumcise, to mutilate their children. So we need to, that's another thing we need to work on, to empower them, give them another source of living, give them another source of income so that they will abandon FGM. Now, I want to quickly cite maybe one or two examples. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I am a survivor of FGM and, you know, I didn't know early in life. I got to know 
very very late and I, I, I even started my advocacy for FGM before I got to know and it was like a shock it blew to me and I realized that there could be some other ladies out there that are survivors and they are not aware now this is not to make you to be aware or not but this is to make you to prevent younger generations from going through what we went through when we discovered we we're mutilated okay so that is the reason why I'm an advocate of FGM now Today is the International Day of Zero Tolerance to Female Genital Mutilation and the theme for this year's celebration is Accelerating Investment to End FGM. How can we accelerate investment to FGM? We can do that with our time, we can do that with our money, we can do that with our, with our resources, we can do that with the knowledge we have, okay? I don't want to go too much in that now. There was we FSI had FSI Spiritual Shikas Initiative. We had an outreach about two years ago in a town in Ocean State, and we went there about FGM. And funny enough, for it was just an a day, very few hours, like maybe two hours the outreach. We went from house to house and to talk to them about FGM. The truth is that in that town, almost all of them believed in FGM. One number two. I personally was able, I was able to talk to a father that was ready to take her daughter to a, to a, to a, to a circumciser the following day to mutilate her. So I was able to convince him that this thing is not necessary. She, it was like, eh, he can accept anything, but if a girl is promiscuous, he, do, he does not like it. So I asked her, why do you want to do this? She said, he doesn't want her daughter to be promiscuous. I was like, this thing will not make your, this like, this thing doesn't mean your daughter will not be promiscuous, but it, it will prone her to become promiscuous in the sense that I asked her, for example, the thing you want to go and remove is the thing that will make her enjoy this thing that we are talking about. Now, if you now take and they remove that thing, she will not feel it like that, like that again, depending on the type of FGM that was done. Now, for example, you are married, you said yes. Now, if you are doing this thing that we are talking about, this sacred thing, if you are doing it with your wife and she's lying down on the bed like a log of wood, she's not moving her body, she's not making any sound, she's not feeling you. Will you be happy? Say that. No, I will she be happy. That will not be. I said that is exactly what you want to prone your daughter to if you do this thing for her. He was convinced. He got more understanding, more knowledge about it. And he promised not to do it. Likewise, another person in my team, in my organization, also, that person was able to convince a, a young woman that wants to take a baby to be circumcised to, 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 for that thing to be done. Do you understand? And now, there's something called medicalization of FGM. See, FGM is not medicalized. There's nothing like medicalization of FGM. Health workers, I'm an health worker, and I would not in any way practice FGM. So any health worker that is practicing FGM should face the law. See, eh, you can send me DM. If you know any health worker that is practicing or encouraging FGM, don't send me DM. Don't worry, you can use anonymous. Don't worry. You can do anonymous. Send them. We will apprehend them. They will face the law. Because how will you be doing it? It is not medically right. So, do you understand? Now, so I already talked about that. Now, there another example I want to talk about is there's this woman. She gave birth to three daughters. I think a friend of mine narrated this story to me. She had a grown-up daughter. Three, two grown-up daughters, I think. Then one baby. So, she now said that this the oldest, the eldest among the three she was having some vagina itching at all. So she thought maybe because she had not mutilated them. That was why the ladies always touching her vagina. And the thing is, this girl can have any vagina infection. It can be any other thing. She now carried them. Older girl, middle girl and baby to circumcise her. They now caught all of them. Like, why? I wanted to ask that my friend, please give me the contacts. Let me go. Let's arrest this woman. But you know, it was a from film and she could not even do that so please this thing is fgm is out of it fgm is out of it ask from survivors of fgm okay when i got to know about fgm i knew how long it took me for before i could able to i was able to process it and if the what, what made it add up for me was because i had already started my advocacy program about FGM before I got to know that I was a survivor. So I'm fine. I was I was already fighting for a cause. I didn't know I was a victim. Do you get but we are not victims, we are survivors. <laughs> Do you get so please, please let us talk to our parents. Let us talk to our grandmothers. Let us talk to our 
grandfathers let us talk to everybody that we know about fgm it is wrong it is illegal it is it is harmful and it does not have any health benefit okay i don't know let me check if i still have anything else to say the final thing i want to talk about i want to be sure that i already talked about everything i want to talk about yes so i think the final thing i want to talk about if you can see this documentary i don't know i think i was privileged to watch that documentary one time seeing that documentary hey, i wept oh so i think maybe you need to see that documentary to understand more understand and the funny thing i even saw this documentary before i knew that was a survivor i cried that day that i watched the documentary now now i know that was a survivor that's a gist for another time don't worry i'm still going to do a video now i got to know that i'm i'm, I'm a survivor of fgm and what happened before the knowing the after and i was able to cope and come out of it and you know stay strong because hmm, crazy rara so now this this documentary is in the name of your daughter it's a it's a it's about there's a woman she went through um fgm as a child and she almost passed so that was why she stood up i think she's from tanzania so that was why she now built she built a safe house in tanzania so people that in these neighboring communities that they are they want to perform fgm for something they run they run away from home save house have a lot of children there and they are catering for them in that save house because the community is is dangerous the community is toxic they don't want to know they just want to do their thing and perform fgm but she could she built a safe house for these children and they are coming there a lot of children are there and the a name the name of the woman is Roby Samueli. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. So she 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 was the one that built the server and started that initiative. So we can check it out. Check documentaries on FGM. Check in the name of her daughter and see a lot of things about it. So thank you so much for coming. If you actually watched this video, like you really watched, you did not forward it. You you did not you did not stop and me that you came to this point. God bless you. God, chop no go. <laughs> I'm really serious. If you actually do, sincerely, put it in the comment that you did. Sincerely, I really appreciate it because I know this is a long video, but I could not help it. You know me now, seven minutes, ten minutes, months so on cutting my mask, so stop. But lady, we need to be detailed and you know explain very well so that you understand. So I'm very sorry for taking our time and thank you so much for coming to the end of this video with me. I really, really appreciate you. And I hope you've been able to learn one thing or the other. And I hope you also you will put in your investments to FLJ. You want to give us money, our FL, our organization. We need money to do things, so you can check us out on I'll put our um what's it called now? Twitter and do IG page. I'll put maybe IG page. Yeah. I'll put it there so that you can check what we are doing. And if you want to support us, if you want to do something, you can. And surely you will see the results of your money, okay? So thank you so much for coming to this to the end of this video with me. To the next time we are meeting, if you truly enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Emma Fumi thumbs up. Emma Fumi thumbs up. Give me Fumi energy to share more videos. I said that. Be giving me thumbs up so that I will have more energy to do more videos, okay? So give me thumbs up if you actually enjoyed this video. And... If you have a question or anything, you can put it in the comment section. Share with your friends or share everywhere. Here and there, share. Okay? Share this video. Give me a thumbs up and um, like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to put up the notification bell so that you would receive notification when I drop new videos. Another video is coming soon. Like, coming soon, soon. Okay? So, thank you so much for coming through. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.